Some students really like mathematical science. Some do not. And usually parents and teachers can tell even from a very early age. Maybe they are playing with numbers. Maybe they are drawing geometry diagrams and so on. So, since we are doing this Olympiad training and school research for like 15 years now, starting in 2009-2010, parents often come to us and ask us that, how do I nurture this interest of my child? Sometimes they have a different type of question that, okay, maybe my child doesn't like mathematics today, but it's possible that this interest is still at a nascent stage. We cannot see it, but maybe it's there. How do I find that out? So in this video, we will discuss some of the resources and strategies that you can use to nurture young children in the direction of mathematical reasoning and mathematical sciences, Olympiads and so on. And I will share with you several things that you can do even when you do not see your child showing explicit interest in mathematical sciences. My name is Oshani Dashgupta. I have been a faculty of mathematical sciences, Olympiads and research at Jinta Academy for 15 years now. Uh, we have trained some of the best students from all across the world. Uh, some of our kids are in Harvard, MIT, Indian Statistical Institute, Chennai Mathematical Institute, Oxford, Cambridge. Some of the best places in India and across the world. If you want to know more about us, check the link in the description. We are deeply passionate and involved in student development and spreading of knowledge related to mathematical sciences. Let's get started with the first subject, that is mathematics itself. I will also talk about a little bit of physics and a little bit of computer science. In mathematics, there are really two types of students that we see all the time. The first type are analytical in nature. They are good with numbers. Let's call them number people. These number people, young kids, they can do arithmetic problems quite easily. They are not afraid of them. They are able to process step by step reasoning and so on. It's best to start with numerical patterns with these type of kids. Numerical patterns means let's say I ask you a question like this that we have a sequence of numbers. The first number is 1, the second number is 1, the third number is 2, the fourth number is 3, the fifth number is 5. Now can you guess the sixth number? So this is the Fibonacci sequence and some of these kids, really young kids, first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade kids, they really like this sort of number games. But remember, these are not just games, they are deep mathematical concepts presented as great games. We call them numerical patterns. We have a separate module on numerical patterns at this stage of Math Olympiad program. So, for number people, start with numerical patterns. But what about the other type of people? I call them spatial people. They are good with shapes. They are not that good with, they may not be that good with numbers. They might be, they may not be as well. They are very good with shapes, they are good with doodling stuff. They like to draw, they like to see what's going on by changing the picture a little bit. These people, for these people you can use spatial patterns. We also have a module named as spatial patterns in the Math Olympiad program at this level. Spatial patterns has problems like this that if you have a cube, let's say a three-dimensional cubical box and let's say an ant is sitting at one corner and it wants to go to the other corner and it's only allowed to walk on the surface of the cube then what is the shortest path that the ant can take? So students who are really good in spatial patterns 
they are actually able to think about, imagine about such a path. The path sort of pops out in front of their eyes. So it's important to distinguish children, ones who are good with number pattern, number people or numerical patterns, one ones who are useful with um, spatial patterns. In fact, there is a symptom called dyscalculia. You can Google it if you want. It has been widely studied that there is a percentage of children out there who are not really good at understanding numbers. These people suffer from a uh, process called dyscalculia and it's not good to present them with numerical problems. Instead, you should present them with spatial problems. So that's the first strategy. Try to understand what your child is good at. Numerical patterns or spatial patterns. And then reinforce that. Give them problems like that. And there are many beautiful books with problems of both kinds. You can check the link in the description for some examples of books. Uh, especially I will mention Math Olympiad for Elementary School Children by Natasha Roskovskaya. It's a very beautiful book. And Math Circles from uh, 3 to 7 by Zoonkin. That's also a very nice book. At this stage, you can use these two books. There are many other titles. Check the link in the description for more detail. If you are an internal student of Chinta, you can also use the Panini 8 problem solving software, which has both of these type of problems very carefully created. That's the first stage. Try to understand the mind of your child and then do accordingly. The second thing, and that's also equally important, if not more important, is to inspire the child and let the kid do certain things on his or her bone. So how do you do that? How do you inspire a kid to think deeply? One way is to provide the child with some other kids, an ambience of some other kids who are also very much interested in problem solving. Look, problem solving is the bread and butter of this process. You cannot start with a bunch of theory and then expect the child to memorize those theory and then spit it out and solve some problems. That's a reverse way or wrong way of doing stuff. Instead, provide them with books and people who would inspire them to actually go ahead and try things on their own. Again, one book of this category is by Gamo, 1, 2, 3, Infinity. It's a very beautiful book. You can definitely help your child to get hold of this one. There are many other such titles. We recommend such titles often in our WhatsApp groups, in our student communities. If you are there, you have, of, of course, seen them. But other people are equally important who are also very excited about solving problems. So that's the second thing. Give them an ambience for trying out new things. The third thing, using slow problems. So this is a bit counterintuitive because especially in India, though we have students from all parts of the world, in India we are obsessed with learning formulas, learning tables, our parents or teachers might have done the same thing when we were young. They are obsessed with memorization, quick calculation, stuff like Vedic mathematics, or abacus and stuff like that, right? Take a step back from this and think for a moment about something called slow and low tool mathematics. What is low tool mathematics? Low tool mathematics means problems which do not require any formula or they require very little formula. They will just require the child to 
think carefully, to doodle some pictures, to use normal reasoning. Once the child is able to do that, there's no tool problems. Once, once he or she is able to do that, then you'll see that they are at a different stage of maturity and interest in the subject. So definitely use low tool problems. The books that I mentioned contains those type of problems. It's important to choose those type of problems and discard the memorization part. We often use some additional tools like Sudoku, Kendaku and Masu. These are games. Kendaku is a very beautiful game, by the way. We use it all the time in our younger children's classes. We can be very quick with mathematical reasoning and pattern recognition if they use these type of games. You can also Google them. They're freely available online. And they're very, very powerful and beautiful. But they should be used as just a salt in the main preparation. The main preparation should be the low tune problems, which are available in the books that I mentioned. If you are a member of Chinta, they're available in the homework problems and classic problems in the Panini 8 software and so on. And let's go ahead and talk about computer science. So we also have a computer science program for really young kids, like third graders, fourth graders start with it. The main tool that we have seen to work really well is design thinking. So we use a tool called Scratch developed by the MIT Media Labs. You can definitely use that. Again, the link is in the description. You can check it out. Scratch is a beautiful piece of software where the students can go and they can build animations, games and stuff like that. And they can use pieces of code as Legos. Like there are little snippets that sort of plug in with each other and they can build entire animations, entire games and so on. And while they do it, they learn the basic principles of algorithmic thinking. Remember, we are going through an age of artificial intelligence revolution. So just knowing coding is not enough or is not even anything that one should desire. We should focus instead on thinking algorithmically, which is the main stay of computer science itself. Computer science teaches us to think iteratively, think in an algorithmic manner. There are certain principles that are at play while we solve problems in computer science. And it's important to make the mind focused and oriented toward that way of thinking. So definitely use tools like Scratch, where you can design stuff which look beautiful and use the principles of algorithmic thinking and also create pseudocodes to solve mathematical problems using algorithms. Mathematical problems could be like this. How many prime numbers are there from 1 to 100? There is no direct formula for this, but can the student come up with a step-by-step -step instruction so that a computer can get all the numbers from 1 to 100, which are prime numbers? What about 1 to 1,000? What about 1 to 1 million? How many steps are needed by the computer to actually complete the process? So all of this lets the young mind think about problems in a different way. And if you are trying to teach your child computer science, do not teach them how to code. I mean, of course, do that at a certain point, but that's not, that's, no, that's not the main focus. The main focus is to learn how to think algorithmically. And that is what we should be doing and it has worked quite wonderfully in the past. Now let's come to physics. Physics is a beautiful subject, highly dependent on mathematics. And we take a lot of care in our physics programs. Many students participate in it with a great amount of joy. We've learned quite a few things while teaching these kids physics. 
there are two parts of physics again and we should be very very careful about handling both of those parts i call them the faraday and the witten so maybe you have, you can google them if you do not know these names faraday was a great experimentalist he did not have any formal education but he had a great mind a genius mind for doing experiments and he learned about the physical world using those experiments so a big part of learning physics at least 50% of it should be to do experiments and that's how our programs are also built 50% of this is just experiments and these experiments they're so beautiful they can be done hands on of course you should have a small lab at your home but they can also be simulated you can do it using a software there is a beautiful software that we use all the time called algodoo you can check that in the link in the description again i think it will be very useful the second part the written part is the theoretical physics written is a legendary theoretical physicist so written means by written what i mean is do problems beautiful problems that make you think about the physical world and russians actually built quite a few problems like this from a very long time so what we essentially do in our programs we translate those problems and we help the kids to solve those problems in the classes again it's problem focused uh, problem solving is the bread and butter of mathematical sciences i hope this video has been useful for you i have told you about the different resources and strategies that you can use and i i have also told you about the things that we have learned about learning and nurturing talents in mathematical science so if you have your comments and ideas please share it in the comment section we are also eager to learn thank you for watching this video i'll see you in the next one bye